the American Speed Association, the Great American Racing Series. The flag flying at half mast for Alan Kowicki. Alan Kowicki was unquestionably closer to this racing fraternity than any other today we remember. Waltrip, Martin, Wallace, the agonies, the euphorias, to Eddie Seneca and Benson, from local heroes to international legends. The history of contemporary stock car racing is the history of ASA. Alan Kowicki spent the last six years of his life in the limelight. He left a profound racing legacy through seven seasons with the American Speed Association. Well, I met Alan in 1981, and it took almost all of the 1982 season to coax enough conversation out of him to figure out what made him tick. I really have been left with three indelible impressions of Alan Kowicki. Number one, his timidity, almost bordering on insecurity, his absolute commitment to his goal of winning, and the deep abiding faith that he had in family and God. The diminutive graduate engineer raised eyebrows and more than a few hackles among his competitors with his coolly calculated approach to what had previously been pretty much blue-collar racing. Kowicki's infamous checklist left no doubt who was responsible for what, but more importantly... You always wanted to know why something works, you know? I'm the type of person that does what you need to do to make it go, and I don't really care why, I and mean, you always wanted to know why. You know, so that's the more educated approach, or however you want to put it. Though never an ASA champion, Allen was always a contender and often a front runner. Here in 82 at Canada's Cayuga Speedway, he leads Mike Eddy and Bob Seneca while putting a lap on the Mountain Dew machine of Darrell Waltrip. Even Canadian racing legend Junior Hanley found himself with this view of Kowicki's yellow Pontiac. Seneca, himself a soft-spoken racer's racer, would win on this day with Allen a close second. I don't remember exactly when I met him, but I remember uh, first talking to him that he was not a typical racer, uh, speaking to him. He talked real slow and real deliberate, took his time talking, and uh, he seemed more like a, a preacher maybe than a, than a racer. At his best on the fast, high-banked half miles, Alan here fights with veteran Harold Fair at Winchester, Indiana, 10 years ago. Alan and I went back a long time ago, because I used to run USAC back in the 70s. His father was helping Roger McCluskey on some of them Norm Nelson cards. And I never knew this until last year when Alan won the NASCAR Winston Cup thing. I seen his dad sitting at the table, and I said, that's the guy that used to be helping them guys back in USAC back in the 70s. But Alan was a real OK guy. Racing in Wisconsin has always been a family affair. Jim Sauter in silver was a Kawiki contemporary. His son Jay, a current ASA star, best expresses the respect. Growing up in Wisconsin, Alan Kawiki was always there. He raced against my dad. Uh, I even had the fortune to race with him in my early years of ASA. Uh, he, was, he was conversation around the dinner table. Uh, it's a great loss. It's a great loss for racing. Certainly, uh, Alan Kowicki was uh, steadfastly independent, and uh, he was extremely important to American Speed Association racing. Let's take another look at the situation now that has uh, developed outside of corner number four. Actually, happened about uh, four or five laps ago. We're under yellow on uh, lap number 12 right now. And here we see Roger Evans on the outside. Close call. That is Alex Pinsano, who was involved a little later in this. Yeah, I think it. We were concerned about the inexperience of a lot of these drivers, and those four running in that cluster, only one years of experience combined in ASA, and I think they might have seen the car just ahead of them, the red machine that had just gone out of frame when we picked it up in that camera shot, the Jerry Churchill automobile that spun, and I think really is the one that precipitated the entire uh, melee that followed. Well, Ralph had a ground-eye view of that. Ralph, they were crashing and coming right at you. Uh, it was very uh, exciting, I guess you could say, Ray Skillman, and a little scary as well. Give us your perspective from inside the cockpit. Well, inside the cockpit, I looked up and saw the eight car sideways and decided to go to the outside. And I went to the outside. We've just, we ran out of racetrack. Uh, the eight car came up on me. And after I hit him, it broke the steering out of the car. Our car went left down across the track and got into two or three other cars. 
a little surprising to see the body come off the car. What caused that to happen? You know, I really don't know. When I hit Jerry, of course, that started uh, tearing some of the body off. Then I got clipped on the right side, pretty much. But ASA's done a great job with these uh, roll cages that, that they have come up with. And uh, the, the, it wasn't much of a lick, really. It, it, it probably looked a little rough out there, but it, it, it put us out. But it wasn't all that bad. It's all superficial. I don't think the car, you know, the car's going to need a lot of tender love and care, but the, the car's not killed by no means. Larry, I think that man right there, Ray Skillman, hit the nail on the head. When ASA designed this brand new car, prior to the 1992 season, they had three primary goals in mind. Number one, to make it affordable so that guys from racing series that were champions in their own respective leagues could come, come here and run with ASA. And we've seen that with 52 entries this weekend. Secondly, cars that could run on quarter miles, half miles, the super speedway miles, and road courses, which we'll visit twice this year, and most importantly, that safety feature. They all have the same identical center section that comes off the same assembly line, and then they do the rest of the work themselves. But that's exactly what we saw. You also, uh, as a racing fan, you have to admire the, the moxie of Ray Gilman. Here is a businessman. He is extremely successful car dealership business, actually a series of them, uh, in the south side of Indianapolis. And he announced to many of the members, of course, it's his dealership, so he could do this. Well, I won't be around too much until, say, mid-October. He was going to go racing this year, and he's uh, in it for the long haul and for a very serious 1993 season. Now, the one-lap signal is coming up, and the 38 or 39 cars that are left, we don't have an exact count, stretch around about three-quarters of this speedway. Here is the top 10 after 14 of 250 laps. Tony Range, Jay Sauter, and John Benson, Jr., pretty well documented. Mike Eddy is fourth, and Scott Hansen, bit of a comeback this year, but he's been red hot the last couple of weeks, is running fifth. Sixth through tenth, Bob Seneker, Kent Stauffer, Glenn Allen Jr., Todd Forbes, and Larry Phillips. Green flag coming up, and we're racing again on the Odessa High Banks. This restart going single file really tightens up the field. Uh, we had about six or seven laps under green flag, and many of the cars are still running to a rest. And uh, frankly speaking, the leaders had not begun to approach the back markers yet. We were all a little surprised. We thought it would happen quickly, but everybody is running strongly today. But now, as the battle heats up up front, they begin to approach slower traffic. Gary St. Amant moving to the high side of Jay Sauter. He's being pressed by Mike Henney, but again, Benson will wait as they put a lap on the Dave Anspaugh machine, car number 37. A couple of cars already showing some smoke. We talked about Gary St. Amant up front in the wind's Thunderbird, and he's trailing a, a little bit of smoke heading down the back stretch. But Tony Rain somehow has managed to hold that top spot in the early going. The first four cars, Tony Rain's in the ETR, ENL Brokerage Chevrolet. He leads Jay Sauter in the KC Racing Enterprises. Bright green and black number one is second. Johnny Benson, Benson in the Berger Chevrolet with Port City splashed across the side. He runs in third, and running in fourth right now is the GM Goodrich Pontiac, hmm. number 88 of my guess. Have to get used to saying that. Yeah, that's, that's, that's hard, isn't it? Larry, something I'm noticing early, a brand new race Challenge surface. for the lead. Challenge green, for the lead. I just started to say a green racetrack, and I was surprised that the cars were single file at the beginning. Now, all of a sudden, two distinct racing groups have come into play. Our first combat pass for the lead of the 1993 season, Jay Sauter, prominent in the memories of Alan Kowicki, homesteader from Wisconsin, just like Alan, makes the first bit of fireworks for 1993. And the drivers running one, two, three, Jay Sauter, Tony Raines, and Johnny Benson Jr., all three earned their first career ASA victories in the 1992 campaign. Out of the first four, behind that is Bob Seneca trailing all these cars very competitive early on. Scott Hansen has uh, settled in the sixth. Ken Stauffer, terrific qualifying run in the fourth, the fastest uh, Ford product of this weekend. He is in the seventh position. Glenn Allen Jr. is eighth. And in ninth is local track specialist Larry Phillips. Boy, keep your eyes on him. Phillips, by the way, will be in a white Kodiak-sponsored car. Yeah, that's uh, affiliated with Ken Schrader. You're looking at the cars running in the first eight right now, lapping Roger Avance from Denver. There's Kent Stauffer and Glenn Allen Jr., the two fastest qualifying Fords this weekend. This big contingency program for Ford has brought a lot of people uh, to the Ford that ranks in 1993. Stauffer has run that machine for a lot of years. It's a new, new venture for Glenn Allen Jr. in True Motorsports. 
There are nine Fords that have entered here, race number one, and uh, affectionately we used to call Ford foreign cars for the American Speed Association, but that is certainly no longer appropriate. Starfield, you mentioned Glenn Allen Jr., Seneca, Todd Forbes, Gary St. Amant among the drivers piloting Ford. 